Let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The supreme sacrifice for all creations, everlasting God delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba, a Buddha supernatural teacher. First lesson, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Second lesson, Second Peter chapter 1, verses 5 to 9. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly love, and to brotherly love charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Golden text, John chapter 15, verses 13 to 14. Greater love art no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I have commanded you. Introductory spiritual chorus. O blood of the Lamb, if I should use my blood, to lay foundation, no power would be able to destroy this handiwork. Quote, Brethren, this gospel would be a source of great happiness to you, the reason being that the entire world was doomed the world was at the verge of destruction and if our Lord Jesus Christ did not decide to manifest in the flesh so as to redeem mankind with his precious blood, no other person could have, would have, no other person could have volunteered to undertake the Herculean task of salvaging humanity. The condition stipulated by God for the remission of the sins of man was the shedding of a flawless blood, blood that was spotless without the tiniest fragment of sin. This was the divine arrangement, the agreement between God and Christ, which engendered is coming to the earth. This explains why he is glorified and exalted above every other phenomenon. Having accomplished what no other person or angel could, he has assumed eternal glory and is unequaled among men and angels. The sins of man from the time of Cain to eternity have been expunged and shall no longer be remembered. Our living in complete freedom stems from this great liberation. God knew that if he were to impute sins to men, nobody would be considered sinless and worthy of salvation. We are made worthy by bathing and being washed in the priceless blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ironically, man has continued to impute sins on his fellow man, thus attempting to destroy what God has rectified and sanctified. 
do you not know that we have all been forgiven by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ? More so, did you not know that Christ died because of you and every other person? Therefore, he stands as the mediator between God and man. I would not have come but for the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I have no business with evil. Your sins have long been forgiven and he has made it possible for my manifestation among men. I do not have any judgment any punishment or sentence to pronounce against anybody. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ has washed away all our iniquities and consequently set us at liberty. The reason I laugh at you on the one hand and have my pity on you on the other hand is that despite the shedding of the precious blood by our Lord Jesus Christ, which had remitted your sins, you still impute sins to your fellow men. You indulge in judging and condemning yourselves, which thus renders meaningless the invaluable blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This act betrays your ignorance of the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ and his divine mission. What do you think was the purpose of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? Furthermore, what do you think was the reason for his persecution and eventual crucifixion? What is the reason behind man's suffering today? A great number of people claim to worship God and yet they continue indulging in stealing in hatred, in covetousness, telling lies, imputing sins to their fellow men, and killing of all sorts. Does this false claim not signify hypocrisy? This is why it is nominated in the scriptures that he that believes that our Lord Jesus Christ came and died for his, for his sins is forgiven and redeemed. It is finished. This revealed why he made the pronouncement, it is finished. While on the cross, he paid the supreme price of sin and liberated men from damnation. Therefore, those who persistently condemn their fellow men are classified as unbelievers. Those who continue to steal, to hate, covet, indulge in idolatry and other forms of ab abominable acts are equally categorized as unbelievers and antichrist. But as many as believe in Christ, God has justified and saved. Our great-grandparents endeavored to obtain justification through the law but failed and have perished. This is the reason God wanted to destroy the world. It is a glaring truth that nobody is worthy in the whole world. With the awareness of man's unworthiness, Christ accepted to intercede in the order. Christ accepted to intercede in order to redeem mankind. The entire sins of man were remitted from the day our Lord Jesus Christ declared, It is finished on the cross. Those who believe in him are forgiven and redeemed. Since we have in this new year been redeemed of this truth, we are enjoined not to further impute sins to anybody. For all of us have been 
sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. You should neither impute sins to yourself nor another person. Rather, you are bound to peacefully coexist in love because of the flawless blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the first lesson be read again. First lesson, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Brethren, the above text constitutes the clear message that we have for the entire world. Love has now assumed supremacy and rulership, thus nipping hatred and other vices in the bud. The orders, arrangements, and institutions that had signified sinfulness have passed into oblivion, making way for the enthronement of righteousness. The all-powerful words, it is finished, mark the end of man's condemnation of his fellow men, of hatred, of falsehood, and other forms of ungodliness. Your duty is to express love towards all creatures, whether animals or insects or grasses or plants. For our Lord Jesus Christ manifested to die for all these creatures of God. Anybody who believes in God, irrespective of his status, would always know that he is faithful and true and would not want anybody to perish. The two thieves that were nailed on each side of our Lord Jesus Christ signifies the sins of the world from the time of Adam and on whose behalf he shed his precious blood as a sign of their redemption. People who call themselves Christians and are still persistent in imputing sins to their fellow men are false Christians. As a matter of fact, such people are not Christians. Whoever imputes sins to his fellow men, irrespective of his religious inclination or faith, is doomed. Such a person does not have a share in the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and the essence of the sacrificial lamb. As it is written, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son to manifest in the flesh and give his life as a ransom for the sins of men, so that nobody would perish but have everlasting life. Therefore, from this moment, you are enjoined to desist from imputing sins to yourself and to your fellow men. For Christ has consecrated all of us. He bridged the gap between all men. As such, there is no more disparity between white and black, between Jew and Greek, and between rich and poor. We are now one in the Lord. The Lord did not die for us because of our righteousness or worthiness, but because of his immense love, his mercy and grace, his greatest desire for all men is peace, love, and prosperity. Spiritual chorus, thank you, thank you, O helper of the poor. Let this second lesson be read again. Second lesson, Second Peter chapter 1, verses 5 to 9. 
and beside this giving all diligence unto your faith virtue, unto virtue knowledge, unto knowledge temperance, unto temperance patience, unto patience godliness, unto godliness brotherly kindness, unto brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and art far forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Brethren, have you now seen the cause of my amusement? The teaching I give to you are absolute truth and are worthy of acceptance. Undoubtedly, all of us have been purified by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For this reason, we are asked to refrain from all forms of vices as a reciprocation of the Lord's kind gesture. This is what portrays us as true children of God. We are hopeful that everybody would imbibe this gospel and refrain from further perpetration of evil. Let us all be enveloped in and be guided by the Lord's love and also grow in his divine path as a justification of the shedding of his blood for us. The component parts of these virtuous acts of love are faith, patience, meekness, long-suffering, holiness, and the righteousness of the saints. Anybody who is devoid of these qualities is blind and has forgotten the significance of the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ by which all of us have been purified. This confirms the veracity of this statement. Blindness is the worst among all diseases. We are no longer bound by the laws of men which center on imputing sins to our fellow men, stealing and other nefarious activities. Men have, within a short time, rendered meaningless the precious blood and painful crucifixion. We would be sure of inheriting the kingdom of God if only we would express love for one another and desist from imputing sin to our fellow brethren. This is why we do not impute sin. We do not harass or disgrace. We do not beat or oppress anybody in brotherhood of the cross and star. As witnesses to the sheer grace lavishly poured on us, we are implored to extend this to all mankind in order that everybody would also be saved. There is neither bond nor free, neither new nor old, evil, neither evil nor righteous in the kingdom of God. We are one in the Lord, one flock under one shepherd. All those who seek justification by the law have separated themselves from Christ and have no share in his grace and in his kingdom. Conversely, those who are under grace and not under the law are the owners of the kingdom. You have now come to the understanding that our salvation is not derived from obedience and rights and righteousness, but by the grace and mercy of God. 
no parent or couple, no children, no brethren or relative or friend can exhibit such enormous love for another, which involves the shedding of blood. Only Christ has been able to accomplish this great feat. Everybody has been cleansed by his word. Spiritual quarrels, I have no sacrifice to present. I have no sacrifice to present. For the Son of the Most High God is my sacrifice, brethren. He is the first and ultimate sacrifice made as the last sacrificial lamb. He has brought peace, love, and oneness to man. No other sacrifice would be required anymore till eternity. None of you had before now known brotherhood. It is this year that I would reveal Brotherhood of the Cross and Star to you. Briefly, Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is what constitutes the entire admonition. It is love, it is meekness, kindness, peace, mercy, humility and long-suffering and other deeds of righteousness. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star has no affinity with falsehood, hatred, backbiting, and other unwholesome activities. You, you persistently indulge in evil deeds because you are neither brotherhood nor you know what it entails. The truth I am unveiling to you is that salvation or justification are not achieved through the law. We have been made perfect and just through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The reason we members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star do not have problems is because we adhere to the stipulated tenets of righteousness. Therefore, whosoever believes and opposes these injunctions would not have any problems. Those who keep this commandment shall find peace, mercy, humility, goodness, prosperity, and the glory of God. Let the golden text be read again. Golden text, John chapter 15, verses 13 to 14. Greater love art no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever I commanded you, brethren, the question you have to ask yourself is, what would be the, con the consequence of my failing to adhere to the status required by God? Are all those who are continuously engrossed in stealing in killing, in hatred and, covet and covetousness, are they his friends? Can those who unrelentlessly impute sins to others fight, begrudge, and calumize and litigate against their fellow men claim to belong to the Lord? These are canker worms that are plaguing the entire fabric of Christendom and the entire world. They have no belief in God and do not obey Him. That is why they perpetrate all forms of vices, but those who belong to Him abhor evil practices and constitute his friends. Spiritual chorus, because he did what pleased God, because he did what pleased God, 
He was called a friend of God. Brethren, as a display of his pure love and mercy, the Lord rebuked and charged Peter to put back his sword into the sheet after having severed the chief priest servant's ear. He revealed that whoever came with the sword should die by it with such hidden knowledge at the back of our minds. We abhor hatred, violence, or any act that would negate the significance of the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why we are friends. This is the reason I keep reminding you that Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is not a church. It is not a conventional institution of learning. It is not a prayer house, nor a healing home. The churches, the communities, the states, nations, and individuals are besieged by unspeakable problems because they live by the sword and practice the law of retaliation. As he had exhibited endurance to the whole world, it is therefore incumbent on us to equally tolerate others. For it is said, no crown comes without a cross. We have to be our brother's keeper and tolerate one another in order to inherit the kingdom of God. If we continue to recall the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed on our behalf, we would endeavor to practice righteousness among one another. Paul disclosed that anybody who is responsible for the fall of another of whose sake Christ died is doubly condemned for rendering worthless the precious blood. Be careful not to be responsible for the condemnation of anybody for whose sake Christ shed Christ for whose sake Christ died. This is the recondite knowledge which had been hidden from us. We had hitherto been walking in darkness. Anybody who hates his brother is a sinner and has no share in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and he has no share in his kingdom of God. We should live in brotherhood and sisterhood with the full realization that we are one in the Lord. If we love one another, the world then would identify us as God's friends. Beloved, a stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. He who has ears, let him hear what the Holy Spirit has imparted to the entire world. May God bless his holy word. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.